the greatest need for King James Video Ministries. That's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to be bringing out some details about uh, our need, which is a new ministry office. I'm just going to come right out in the beginning, tell you what the need is. Um, we do need, we have a GoFundMe page, and um, we've been, I've talked about that in other videos and things in the past. But um, so we need the financial, but more than that, we need prayer. Okay, um, so let me just say right at the very beginning of this video, before I get into the history of King James Video Ministries, um, why we are in the situation we are in, you know, the, the why, the how, the when, the where, whatever. <laughs> uh, we're going to get into a lot of detail, stuff that a lot of people do not know, even people that have been around for quite a few years. I'm going to be talking about some uh, higher detail type of stuff in this video, explaining how King James Video Ministries has grown over the years. But uh, just at the very outset, I'm going to tell you what the video, how it will end, and that is that we do need the money for a for expanding the ministry, for growing the ministry. Um, and I'm going to tell why and the whole thing as we get into it. But more importantly, and this is, this is key, you say, well, I, I really can't afford anything. Well, then please, I want you to spend your time in prayer. All right, um, because what we need more than anything else right now, um, we need a place to open up for sale. Okay, because right now, there really isn't anything that would work for us in our price range. All right, um, there really isn't anything on the market. So I'm asking right at the, the, the beginning of this video, before I get into all the details, if you could please fervently pray that the Lord would open up a place for us to buy. Uh, where we could relocate relocate our ministry from the town of Bridgewater down to the town of Patton, where our new ministry office is. Okay, the town of Patton, the surrounding area. Okay, say it that way. Um, it doesn't have to be in town, in other words. But we really desperately need the prayers of God's people. Um, we have a very uh, it's a very desperate need to be down here because we spend. I mean, as many people have heard. It's a three-hour round trip up and back when we have to go to the office. So uh, live streaming, uh, Skype conversations with people, talking to people on the phone, answering people's emails. I mean, that, that's all stuff I do, you know, besides my normal studying and preaching. And, um, you know, I, again, I, I spend a lot of time doing that stuff, counseling people and whatnot. And I just, I, mean, I have to cut out three hours of my day. And a lot of times we've actually, we'll get up and we'll leave here, at, you know, 6 o'clock, 6.30 in the morning just to get up there. And we're there till 3, 4 o'clock and we got to leave to be able to get back. So it's really taken a lot of time. It's a lot of wear and tear on our vehicles. And so we're just, we're really worn, worn out from this whole thing, this all this travel. And uh, we can't keep affording to buy you know, vehicles and running our vehicles into the ground and everything because of all the miles we're putting on them. And it's not, you know, it's not like we're driving super highways here, okay? I mean, it's, you know, where we live, it's, you know, the roads are a little bit harder on vehicles up here than in other places where people might live, especially in the wintertime with all the chemicals that they put on the, the roads. It just destroys our vehicles. So, but please, if you can donate to the the uh, GoFundMe thing, or just another, another way of donation, uh, sending a check or money order to the P.O. Box, or just PayPal on our website. Um, that is a really big need right now. But like I said, what is more important, and it doesn't cost you a thing, but your time, and that is we need the prayers, the fervent prayers of God's people. Please, I am begging you for that. If you can't donate, you don't want to donate, whatever else, that's not even as important. We need serious prayer, okay, for the Lord to open up a place for us, some place for sale or whatever else, okay? Now let me get into some more of the details, okay? First of all, I want to talk about the history of King James Video Ministries because I realize there's always new people coming along. You might think, I wonder how, you know, Brian got started in this whole thing. How did it happen? Well, um, way back in... 2007, I believe it was, a lot of this stuff is just, my memory gets real foggy when I get back that far because there's so much that's happened with the ministry that's just blown my mind. And, and I just think, 
wow, and I've forgotten people's names and I've forgotten, you know, things in detail. So please, I'm sure my enemies could cut up this video and cut up stuff that I said in the past and make me look like I'm contradicting myself or something. Sorry, my memory. But sometime in 2007, um, I was going to different Baptist churches back then. I was, I'd try one for a while and, you know, a year or two, whatever else, um, much earlier than 2007. And I would go and I would get to know the pastor and sometimes I would teach Sunday school. Sometimes I would preach in the pulpit. And, um, but I kept seeing this thing of just, you know, tone down your message and, and don't get too controversial and you're, you're ruffling too many feathers. And, and it was just kind of, I wanted to serve the Lord so bad but yet these churches kept stopping me from doing it at the level that I knew I need to say these things. I need to get this stuff out. And so I began to look for a way that I could get the truth out. And um, I kept hearing this thing of, uh, you know, there's, there's 60,000 differences between the NIV and the King James Version. And I was, for most of my life, I had used an NIV, New International Version. And I kept hearing this, 60,000, 65, 60,000, 63,425 or something. And I thought, okay, they're, they're contradicting. Gail Ripplinger saying one thing, Peter Ruckman saying another, D.A. Waits saying another thing, Sam Gibbs saying something else. And I'm thinking, okay, if it's X number of words, it should be the same coming out of each person. Why is there contradictions? And I thought, well... I could write to each of them and try to wait for them to contact me back, or I could actually do the work myself. I could actually take my NIV that I used for 15 years. I got it when, uh, when I was uh, 10 years old for Christmas the one year. I, my parents bought me an NIV, uh, New Schofield Reference Bible. I've showed it in some of my old videos. And I used it up until the time I was 25. I got saved when I was... 25, right around that area there. And I can take my NIV and I can take the King James Version. And I'm also going to include the newest, today's new international version that they were coming out with back there in the mid 2000s. Uh, I think the, the TNIV New Testament was in 2001 and the TNIV New and Old Testament whole Bible, if you want to call it a Bible, um, that thing came out in 2005. So it was just hot off the presses and around 2005, 2006 is when I began my work. And I spent, I don't even remember, probably about a year um, collating, going through, comparing. I picked certain very important words that appear in the King James Bible. And I would see, okay, the King James Bible says this, the NIV says that, the TNIV says this. And I would write it down. Uh, over 20,000 references um, times three, you know, looking up in three different you know, versions there. And what I came out with was 5,000 documented word perversions in the NIV, TNIV. This is my work that I did. Uh, it took me a while. And basically, like here's the word souls. And you can see there, King James Version, here's the verse. There's the King James, there's the NIV, there's the Today's New International Version, how they change it. And, you know, I... I did the work. You know, nobody can say, well, you just took other people's work. You know, I had this new versionist at one point, one of the Baptist churches I was, you know, spoke at. And, um, and he said, he said, all you King James only people do is you just repeat each other's work. You know, and that was an insult, but I took it as a challenge. And I said, okay, I'm not going to repeat somebody else's work. I want to do the work myself, which I did. Right there's the work. Um, and going through and things that they added, things that they took out, um, you know, a lot of different words in there. Um, took a while. <laughs> and then I'm thinking, okay, I got this thing done. Now what do I do with it? So I came up with this idea. Well, I can print them myself. Not a very good idea. On my own printer. And then I'll, I'll buy the little machine that makes the, the ring binding thing and I'll put it in there and get the clear sheet, you know, for the front cover and the heavy card stock, you know, and, and I did these things all completely myself. Didn't really want to go with a, uh, um, actual publisher, but right there is the oldest address for the ministry. 
King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 161, Hopeland, Pennsylvania, near where I was living at the time in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. And I thought, okay, I got my work done here. Now what am I going to do with it? And so I decided that I, the best way I could get this thing out in a way that, you know, would be able to help people really understand it because I could show a lot of other things too, would be in the form of a video. And so I bought my first video camera and uh, I'll show you something else here in a minute, but I bought my very first video camera and I recorded my very first DVD which is this one from NIV to KJV by Brian Denlinger. And right there it is. This is my first ever DVD. On the back there, I had a bunch of different things written. You can pause it and read that if you really feel like it. So, um, but I, I bought the, you know, I, these are actually stickers. <laughs> I did the old... Uh, printed DVD sticker and stuck it onto a, you know, DVD minus R, you know, blank DVD or whatever else. And um, I sent these out um, to uh, Peter Ruckman, Chick Publications, Sam Gipp, uh, Kent Hoven at the time, um, Tex Mars, uh, can't think of who else, I think Cutting Edge Ministries or something like that. And Gail Ripplinger was the only one that contacted me back. And she said she wanted to sell the DVD. So I thought, hey, this is great. And I was, at the same time I was doing this, I was also working, um, doing tree work, cutting trees down for people, and also uh, wood turning. I was making wood turnings. I don't have any of them here right now that I could show, but uh, I've shown those in old videos. And uh, so that's, that's what I started to do. And at the same time, I was also trying to get truth out in whatever way I could. And the very first recording I ever made, this is the first time this is ever going to be seen on video. This is really going to be something. I did a four part, uh, you know, audio sermon type of a thing, lecture, if you will, on uh, the rapture, the pre-trib rapture. Right there it is. Um, Volumes one, two, three, and four. You can see right there. So, um, but I covered, uh, I'll just show you these. Volume one, introduction, dispensationalism, Matthew chapter 24, part one, parts two, three, and four. And the time that they're there, Matthew chapter 25, false prophets, 27, 08 there's when that or the length of time that it's there and then the conclusion of the thing so a um, couple hour long study and this is the very first recording i ever made it's audio uh, never released it or anything uh, there's probably things i would improve i'm sure from this old thing but this um, was being done around the same time that i was doing my niv to kjv stuff and i was also writing gospel tracks uh, I had a number of different ones that I had written, and I even wrote a little book on the King James issue and had a pastor make fun of it. You know, King James Only Church. And I, I did a video on him. It's on the secondary channel. His name's Kelly Sensnig. I was going to his church at the time, and, and he just, oh, it's, it's a good book. But, you know, I'm just kind of laughing about it and whatever. But uh, wasn't a Bible-believing Christian. Still wasn't a Bible-believing Christian. Um, closed his... Uh, church down along with all the other hireling, hirelings out there but this tract here six easy things you can do if you want to go to hell <laughs> so my uh oh you know brian's changed so much over the years i used to enjoy listening to him he's so sarcastic now you know i've always been sarcastic it's just part of the way i do things um i'll just show you these just in case you're curious uh, number one, go to a church building and faithfully attend every service. One good thing you can do if you want to go to hell. Number two, try to find professing Christians that are hypocrites. People will hide behind hypocrites, in other words. Number three, establish your own unbiblical righteousness and suffer, suffer for Jesus. Uh, number four, do lots of good works. Number five, confess your sins to a man. And number six, educate yourself out of a belief in hell. 
So there it is. I don't know if you can pause that and read that or whatever else, but um, that's my one tract that I did. Then I did, uh, Do You Make God Sick? <laughs> it's a tract for uh, modern Christians, modern church people, and uh, goes into the thing of false conversion and whatever else. Again, you know, I've been doing this stuff for so many years. This was probably 2007 when I wrote this. And, um, you know, yeah, I still have a few of them around. But uh, just to show something here, where is that? Um, you know, yeah, the, the Robert Breaker and his little devils that, that uh, are his buddies that are now turning against him, they, they've said different times that I reject the blood, that I don't preach the blood, um, which is odd because I've never done that. But it says here, you must realize that you have sinned against God and that your only way into heaven is to be washed in the blood that Jesus Christ shed on the cross. Okay, right up in here. So somebody comes out and says, you know, Brian Enlinger rejects the blood. They're lying. 2007, probably 2006, 2007 is when I wrote that. I've always believed that. So, so much for that. But I wrote a number of these gospel tracks and um, we have on the back of this one, again, uh, our house church at the time. Bible Believers Fellowship, right there, the website, and there, again, we had our P.O. Box in Hopeland. Um, so, uh, we're going way back here. But, uh, so it started out with this, from NIV to KJV, my very first DVD, and then the second one that I did was this one, Ridiculous Bible Perversions of the New Age. My little uh, interesting photo there on the front, Benedict with an NIV in his, under his arm. <laughs> so, and you know, you get back on the back cover there and the Passion of the Christ thing, you know, is right, eyes darkened, interesting little occult stuff. And, you know, so, but uh, this one is still available on my channel you can watch this whole thing the ridiculous bible for perversions of the new age um so i did that and then um i was i mean when i did my very first dvd this thing here i did not know how to do video editing at all i literally just recorded it and you know turned it into a dvd it's terrible it had a little music intro at the beginning that was me playing on a keyboard and I can't play music. I mean, it was awful. I didn't even know what royalty-free music was at the time. I had no idea. I didn't know how to do Sony Vegas movie studio type of stuff like I can now. I had no idea. So, uh, again, I was learning a lot of things. And, you know, I was wearing a white dress shirt and everything, you know, and I was into the whole Baptist thing. This video here, if you watch it on my channel, I'm in a suit and tie and the whole thing. I was a good Baptist for a while. But, uh, so, you know, this, um, these two came out and then I decided that I would redo my first initial horrible video and I redid it as this one from NIV to KJV. A lot of the same things, but this time I'm actually there sitting there, um, you know, showing things and whatever else. And I have the, this, I actually had bought a printer that could print on DVDs. So I was buying printable DVDs. Again, I'm doing all this stuff myself. And um, so there's the little flames on there. The actual one, I messed up printing one of these, but the actual set that I was selling at the time had one with the sky and then the other with the flames. So, um, and when I came out with this thing, uh, Again, Gail Ripplinger was the only one selling it besides me at King James Video Ministries. Um, again, you can see the old address down there in Hopeland, Pennsylvania. Um, and uh, right after I came out with this, this whole thing, um, the NIV came out and said, we're going to do the 2011 NIV thing and whatever else. I think this would have been right around 2010 or so when I brought this one out. 
when I re-released it like that. And um, I was selling it, by the way, too, as a package. I would sell this and this together back in those years. Um, so I was selling the two of them together. And again, printing these things myself, which was a horrible amount of work. And um, so, yeah. And as I began to learn a lot more about video editing and, and um, putting in music, royalty-free music, buying ro royalty-free music, you know, $100, $100 to $150 per uh, CD for ro royalty-free music with the license and everything. And I, I was buying uh, animation software and um, had upgraded my computer, uh, upgraded my camera. And, you know, trying to grow the ministry, trying to make better video. And I came out with my next one, which was a really big one. Um, still probably my best, you know, one of my best videos I've ever released. And that's this here. The Real Bible Version Issue Exposed. Full thing on my secondary channel. If you haven't seen it, um, a lot of hardcore stuff right there. You have the Pope. I think that was Paul the Sixth or something something like that. It was the one right before John Paul II. And right here is, is uh, Kurt Aland, who is behind the new versions, the Nestle Aland text that you hear, that they'll, the NA text or the, you know, whatever, or the NU, sometimes they'll have it as that. But um, right here, he's meeting with the Pope. So the guy that's, that's compiling the new version, uh, Greek text, and he's here with the Pope and, you know, a cardinal there. Hmm. So, and there's a lot of really hardcore stuff in this one. But this thing took me, I don't even remember how long now. I used to always talk about that in my older videos, but it's been so long. I think it was about five months or something like that to put it all together. It was a lot of work getting everything, you know, just right. And, it, and you know, writing out a script and then recording the audio, getting it to sync with the music and the whole deal, um, making images come on and, you know, showing text and whatever else. Um, this one, I think there's, there could be some others out there, but this one actually shows the texts of Westcott and Hort and, and uh, well, Brooke Foss Westcott and Fenton John Anthony Hort, the two guys that came out with the first revised version, basically that the, the text they wrote, the text that later became the, he took up the work, Colonel on took up the work that Westcott and Hort started. Um, but I actually show the pages from the books that are, were much disputed for a long time. So um, there's no dispute those guys were into the occult and they were closet Catholics, essentially. And uh, I show the actual pages from their books, you know, photo scan pages. So not just quotes, you know, and whatever else with a footnote. I'm showing the actual pages in this thing. So um, then after that, after this one, I... Uh, did a video on the house church movement. I don't have one. I couldn't find a, a edition of it here. So I'll just go like this and put up a picture of it there in my hand. See, here's the house church video DVD I did. And, um, and on the inside, there you can see, on the inside there was a audio sermon and a DVD. So uh, there you go. Um, that was another thing I started to get really into the thing of house churches. I actually had written a tract on house churches as well. Uh, so a lot of different stuff going on there. But um, I'm trying to think of what else I was going to say about all that. Um, but here's the point. Uh, I had, I was producing more and more and more physical, you know, stuff like this that I was going to be selling. Okay, and I was making, you know, I wasn't definitely not getting rich because nobody knew who I was back then. And, um, but I was producing product and I was paying taxes on this and the whole deal. Um, and somebody told me, actually, my oldest brother, it's kind of funny, he's a contemporary Christian. Um, and he came out and he told me about YouTube. And I thought, what's YouTube? And I went and I checked into it and, uh, you know, talking to different people. And they said, yeah, you know, you ought to get a YouTube account or whatever. And I thought, well, okay. And so I started to put, you know, I did the YouTube thing for a little bit. And I thought, well, I'll just put some logging videos on there just to see, 
because you have to open up a YouTube account to be able to comment on other videos, even back then in 2008. Okay, fine. So I got onto YouTube, put up a bunch of logging videos, originally had called the channel Husky 394 XP after my big professional chainsaw. And, uh, and I put up some fishing videos. I put up some different things here and there. And um, we're getting some hail outside right now. If you're hearing the noise up there. Uh, all right, sorry about that. We're back. Passed uh, the little storm passed over um, after some prayer. Lord answered prayer. Um, so anyhow, what I was saying is I, had pro I was producing product here. I was, I was, you know, this thing of YouTube. I got on there and I kind of thought, well, there's some stuff. Uh, on there, there's some videos, and and I and I decided I would put out a few videos just to kind of promote the website, you know, show people a little bit or whatever else. And I started getting some people that were buying my my DVD, the uh, Real Bible Version Issue Exposed. They were buying this, and I had a guy ask me. He said, "Is it would it be possible for me to put this on Vimeo?" Um, Marco Ponce, I think his name was. And he put it on Vimeo, and I, because I had said, yeah, okay, I guess, all right. And I'm thinking, you know, this is my work; it's not copyrighted or anything. But, um, you know, okay, you can put it on there. Um, and the thing got all kinds of views. And that guy later on got led away by Martin Richling and deleted my video and everything that he'd previously stood for. And I asked him the one time I said. When did you get saved? And he, he said, when I met Martin Richling. You know, <laughs> okay. Uh, don't go over to his house for Kool-Aid, please. A uh, little Jim Jones reference if you don't know what I mean. But so, but it, I, I started to, I prayed about it and I had uh, a lot of, you know, counsel from different brethren at the time. And they said, you know, uh, you can reach more people by putting stuff out for free on YouTube. And I had some brethren in Australia, actually, that I didn't have any kind of donation stuff early on on my website. And they said, could you please put a PayPal donation button on your website because we would like to donate to you. And I was, no, 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 I don't want to do that. No, because, you know, I was making products. I was thinking, hey, I'm going to be making more DVDs as time goes by, more and more and more, you know, things that I'm going to be bringing out. And I, no, nah, I don't want to do the donation thing. I, I really don't want to do that. Because, you know, when you're selling product, my time was my own. Um, you know, I, I really wasn't, you know, I would talk to people. I'd witness to people. Sure, absolutely. It's just part of the Christian life. But, you know, if people requested a video, well, it was, well, he'll, you know, maybe we'll see about that. Maybe I'll put out some DVD on that in the future. Because, you know, everything I was putting out was for sale which is perfectly fine, um, you know, because I'm making a product, I'm taking my time to create the thing and whatever else. But they said, you know, why don't you start to accept donations? Why don't you start to put out some of your videos for free and just see what happens? Okay, I prayed about it and I thought, well, I'll start doing that. I'll put some stuff out for free. And so I started to put videos on YouTube and, and, uh, to make a long story short, here I am today. And I don't really sell that many products anymore because I've just been putting things out for so long for free. And um, so my point being, uh, the reason you know that, that we are talking about our need, our financial needs, is because of the fact that I made that decision years ago to give away uh, the material for free. I mean, I, you know, nobody even buys my DVD anymore. Even, you know, well, nobody was buying it. I'll say when I used to have it for sale because it was just online for free. And, uh, you know, there's that thing you got to weigh out, you know, I'm trying to get this truth out to people, but I have to make a living and what do I do? And so, um, because we accept donations, because we, you know, basically work for free, for most people, you don't have to pay anything to watch any of our stuff. Um, because we do that, people ask, you know, what are your needs? OK, 
could you please tell us what your needs are as a ministry? That's what this video is. That's what this whole thing is about. Um, if you want to, if you believe in what we do at King James Video Ministries, then donate to the ministry. Um, I mean, if, don't waste your money going to some church building and, and trying to pay this guy that's afraid of, you know, anything. And uh, he's trying to pay off this big building and whatever else. I mean, yeah, if you want to spend your money on that, well, then go ahead, whatever. But this ministry has borne a lot of fruit over the years, and I give the Lord all the glory for that. Um, so here we are today, um, and I'll explain uh, what happened. I was doing a lot of that stuff, and I was starting to transition to YouTube, and we had our house church, Bible Believers Fellowship, down in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, and it was growing slowly. We'd get some new people come. We'd meet with people. We'd go out. We went out door to door every week on Saturday morning, you know, just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of DVDs and tracks and whatever else, passing things out. A lot of it was my material that I was putting together. And, you know, and again, I was spending so much time on that. It was just crazy, you know, making DVD copies and printing out things and putting together our track packs that we'd give out to people. And, uh, you know, there was very little money coming in at that point in time. I was just donating my time completely to it. And it was, it was just, it was a lot. <laughs> and very, very frustrating in those years. And the Lord brought my wife along into my life. And, um, and that changed everything. Because now, okay, now I'm not a single guy anymore. Now I have to start making more money. Now I need to think about some things. Uh, we moved up to Northwest Pennsylvania to help out at a Baptist church up there. We were lied to. There's a big story about that. Not going to get into all this stuff. And I really was basically giving up King James Video Ministries while we were there. I was making very few videos. They were just continually, you've got to be at the church, you know, the whole faithful Baptist thing and whatever. And I was trying to do my part. I you know, actually preached. Uh, the one Sunday the pastor wasn't even there and I took over the church for that Sunday. He could go on vacation and him and his wife and everything. And, and I preached many, many times in the pulpit. I had old videos, you know, up. I took them down because I don't want to promote their wicked church building. Um, and, but, you know, it just did not work out for a lot of different reasons. They had lied to us to get us there and they just basically wanted to use us for slave labor. You know, me for my video abilities, my wife for her computer abilities and things. It was just a, it was a terrible situation, a very terrible situation. So we moved back down to Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, and that is when the Lord really put it on my heart. Okay, I need to be able to provide weekly studies for people. And I would come out with them and they'd be ready for Sunday morning. And I did that for a couple of months and we were desperately looking for a place to live, a place to move to, because we couldn't stay. We were staying with relatives. We couldn't stay there for long. It was a bad situation again. You know, I mean, if, you, if you're if you saved, you're born again, you know, you have the, the relatives that you deal with, you know what I'm talking about. So the Lord finally opened up a door for us to be able to move to northern Maine. I had a, one of our viewers actually suggested, why don't you check out Maine? Because we were looking all over Pennsylvania, Virginia, West Virginia, a lot of places. And, um, and somebody said, you know, this one guy, brother, he said, uh, check out you know, Maine. I thought, Maine? What are you talking about? You know, well, we looked, we came up and actually bought some land. Okay. And I'll just, I'll show you here just briefly what we're dealing with. Okay. Um, I'll just kind of draw a rough thing of the state of Maine kind of comes up, if I remember correctly, and kind of goes like this. Very, very rough. You know, like that, we'll say. <laughs> All right. Terrible drawing, I realize. But up in the upper part here is a county called Aroostook County. It goes like that, all right? The more northernmost county in Maine, and it's one of the biggest counties in America. It's, it's a huge amount of land up here, okay? Um, I shouldn't say up here because we're not really in that county anymore. But um, And so there's a, a road. When you come up in here, there's a town of Holton right here. I'll just write the H, and then you go up Route 1, and up in here is Bridgewater. All right, well, in between there, not quite in between, but there's another town right here, 
called Littleton. I'll signify that with an L. <clears throat> we bought some land in the town of Littleton, some bare, bare land. Why? Because that's what we could afford. Okay. Um, we never wanted to be a burden on the body of Christ. We realize, okay, we're bringing out things for free. We're putting things out. We are um, supported by the brethren. Okay, people that believe in what we're doing, they're donating to the ministry because they, they see our heart's desire to get truth out. All right, again, I could have stopped at any time and gone back to this world here and said, I'm just going to start producing material again. All right, I could have done that. And by the way, let me just say this. This is a future direction. I'll talk more about that here as we continue. But the neat thing about this is these are my videos. Okay? And I can put whatever I feel like putting into these videos. And YouTube can't come along and, you know, steal my work, monetize my videos. Other people can't come and take my work from me and chop it up and whatever else. So this will be coming back in the future. Uh... I'll explain the plans for that. But we originally bought land in the town of Littleton. Like I said, why? Well, because we looked into the price of, you know, buying, um, you know, an ha actual house or whatever else, and we just couldn't afford it. Uh, the money just wasn't there. We weren't going to go into debt and then be constantly having to plead for people to pay off our, you know, mortgage or something. We didn't do that. So, that's what we did. We bought our land in Littleton and had, and then we went up and, and bought a, an old, very rundown place. It didn't even have running water when we first bought it. There was no heat. We moved in in January of 2014 and uh, it was pretty rough for a few months. But uh, you can watch the old videos where we're at the place. You know, a lot of the stuff I'd put out with the bookshelf behind me and everything, it was done there in Bridgewater. Again, if you've been familiar with the ministry, you know these things. If you're new, it's probably news to you. But um, it was 13 miles, 13 point whatever miles between our place in Bridgewater and our land in Littleton. And the idea was we were going to build a house, an off-grid place back on the land in Littleton. You say, why go off-grid when you're on the online ministry? Well, it doesn't make sense. I've heard that for many years now. Well, the reason for going off-grid is because you can live a much better life that way. Uh, you can grow your own food. You can, it's a lower monthly cost and everything else. Um, it's just the life that we wanted to live. You can heat your home for free. Uh, heating a house up here is very, very expensive. Okay, Our, uh, The winter of 2015 into 2016, which would have been our second winter here, um, our, but our full first winter, we spent a couple thousand dollars on heat. Um, because we had a, a wood pellet stove and it was not placed in the right position and everything else, but that's another story. And again, we tried, we're constantly trying to diminish our cost. Okay, we had it down in the basement, warming the house through heat vents and ducting and whatever else, and okay, that's not working. So let's move it into just one room and close off rooms that we aren't using, and then let's move it into, and let's close off more rooms. And we've always tried in our, in our lives uh, being in this ministry, we've always tried to, to do things cheaper as time goes by. Um, this past winter, 2019 into 2020, was our cheapest winter yet. Um, we spent very, very, very little money. And, and it's, that's the direction for the future of the ministry. And again, what other ministry is like that? You say, well, I, you know, I've had people say, well, I think the Lord's called me to give to another ministry. I'm going to keep watching you, Brian, but... I'm going to give to another ministry, okay? What ministry are you going to get, you know, return on investment, spiritually speaking, from, like you get from here, from King James Video Ministries, okay? And they're buying million-dollar buildings and whatever else. You know, we're spending, you know, a few thousand. So, anyhow, the, the big story was that uh, we were going to build back at Littleton, back on our property, and we had a horrible neighbor a Roman Catholic from New York, just a horrible drunk. I tried to witness to him so many times and he was always too drunk for me to really get a good witness in there. Um, he built on our right of way going back to our land and I got a chance to witness to him. He was finally sober. He flat out rejected the gospel and he was dead in a few months and, um, 
and we hadn't even discovered that he had built on our easement. It was we weren't sure where it was, and when we realized he built on our easement, his property comes up for sale, and we're thinking, oh great. And I contacted a lawyer and the whole thing, and he said there's not much you can do because he did this illegal thing and he's dead, and now they're going to auction off his property, and the new owner is basically going to get, you know, the, a house that's sitting on your easement. So you're going to have to go through paperwork with the new owner and it could get really sticky. And the guy said, I would say to you, you know, young man, it was an older man, older lawyer. And he said, my advice to you, young man, is either buy the property that he's selling. Either you get that property first or you're going to have to sell your land. Well, we tried to get a mortgage and no, didn't happen. And which was totally against what I've, you know, believe in as far as being in debt and whatever. And so we had no choice and we posted our, put our property up for sale after building a few buildings on it, uh, going back in there and, uh, oh, just a nightmare, that whole thing. But um, we put our property up for sale and in eight days it was gone. It was sold. And then we had to spend a few months, you know, because <laughs> the bank down in Southern Maine that this woman was dealing with that bought our property uh, had a whole bunch of Jesuits on it. I'm sure that had nothing to do with this, but... Uh, and it was just a stalled and stalled and stalled and stalled. And um, we looked all over the place for properties. We, we were going to move down to the, the uh, southeastern most part, the Washington County, which is down in here. We were going to move down there by the, you know, near to the ocean, and it didn't work out. And we were going to move uh, kind of into the center part, uh, a little bit above Bangor, and that didn't work out and we were just getting so frustrated and you know we had our place in Bridgewater but the place in Littleton was now gone and so we were thinking okay we have you know a lot of stuff that needs to we, we'd put our stuff in storage in a storage building down in the town of Holton and the mice were getting to it so we're just pulling our hair out just oh what are we supposed to do you know we have to find a new place well, we found a property way over into here. There's a, this kind of comes down like this. I think if I'm not mistaken, this is called Penobscot County. And we found there's a town of Patton up in here like that. And we found some land and it's beautiful area down here. Um, if you uh, ever heard of uh, the Appalachian Trail here in America, there's a Mount Katahdin, which is right about here, is Mount Katahdin, and that is the start of the Appalachian Trail, or the end of it, depending on which way you go. But um, Mount Katahdin, there is in a place called Baxter State Park. It's right near Patton. Patton is the closest town to Baxter State Park. And it's, you know, breathtaking area, really beautiful area. Well, we found some land down there for sale and more than we wanted to spend. And I just thought, I just kind of said, well, you know, Lord, I know that we aren't gonna get this, but I'm gonna offer them $20,000 less than their asking price. And when they say no, then I'll just go on to the next property search or whatever else. Cause we're not, there's no way they're gonna drop $20,000 off the price. That would be crazy. Lo and behold, realtor, I mean, he even, our realtor literally said, uh, I know what you're trying to do, but that's a really low offer. And he writes back a few hours later, they accepted it. Huh? So that's where we are currently standing, right here, um, in northern Penobscot County. So from here, where we're at, up here, back up to Bridgewater, is one and a half hours, as I said earlier. It's a one and a half hour drive. All right. Uh, that gets taxing, okay? And it's, you know, it's a lot of open road too. It's not just back roads or whatever. If we had to take back roads, it would be more like two hours, all right? Uh, there's a lot of just, you know, there's an interstate that we take sometimes and whatever else, and you, we can kind of get a little bit below an hour and a half, but it's pushing it. So, you know, it's a lot. So our desire is to be able to eliminate Bridgewater up here like that and have something down in this area down in here so that we're, you know, I can actually talk to people that I need to talk to 
and not say, oh man, four o'clock, I got to go. You know, um, We'd like to be able to do a lot more to help people, uh, which again, I'll be talking more about this with the office idea. But what we're going to do with the Bridgewater Place, because I'm sure that there's people that would say, well, what are you going to do with the house that's up there? Well, um, again, it's in a very bad condition. Um, it has no well anymore. I was ill-advised by a false uh, convert to that if I would pour concrete into the, the shallow well, it, it's always overflowing, which means that some pump's always going. Um, we've had so many headaches over that whole thing as well. It's got a shallow well in the basement. Okay, It overflows. It goes over through a pipe into a hole. Some pump's out. We've had some pumps break for years, and the basement starts to flood, and we're, you know, it's just... Ugh. power outages and I got to go get the generator in the middle of the night, three o'clock in the morning, two thirty, two thirty in the morning out there getting the generator started and pouring down rain and, you know, plugging the sump pump into the thing so we don't lose our basement. Um, it's been very trying. And, um, but I was ill advised that if I would pour concrete in, that would stop the well. It would, it wouldn't overflow anymore. Yes, it did. And I had to re-break the one part open so that it would flow up through the pipe and go out. So problem wasn't solved. In fact, it got worse because, because now the place doesn't even have running water. And we lived that way for a while, um, having to haul water into the place because of this false convert that uh, lied to me, essentially. Uh, only the finest people, you know, some of these enemies. Um, so that's where we're at right now. Um, again, if we have a place that's down near to our land, uh, it's going to be a lot easier. And again, you know, so well, why don't you just go do this or why don't you get a job? You know, that's my, one of my favorite ones. I do have a job, all right? Um, I work for the body of Christ. I work for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why, you know, the vast majority of what I preach and teach is, you know, actually suggestions from the brethren. And I, I deal with, you know, hundreds of different people on a regular basis, uh, talking to them through Skype, emailing back and forth, talking on the phone. I've met people locally here. Uh, I deal with a lot of people and, you know, I don't talk about a lot of that stuff. I don't film a lot of that stuff. Um, it is just what it is. Uh, and I'd like to be able to do it better in the future, more efficiently. This is not efficient. An hour and a half between where I work uh, that I have to try to commute to that and whatever else. And so that's the whole situation with that. Um, oh, another thing um, that we have looked into, because I know I've had people ask the question, well, your property, why don't you just get the ministry office, build it on the property? Well, the reason, one of the reasons we bought the property so cheap is because there is no electricity or phone out that way, okay? It ends down the road quite a ways. And so in order to get it up through, it's, what is it, $6 per foot or something like that, I think, isn't it? $6 per foot unless you have an easement agreement with a neighbor and you're trying yeah. to together, then it's then like it, five and a half dollars for that. Yeah, but it's, it's essentially $6 per foot. Um, I've never measured it, but it would be probably in the neighborhood of twenty to 30000 just to get electric to our property, which we don't even want here. Um, it would be, permit fees. yeah, excluding permit fees, excluding, you know, any kind of work, you know, tree work I could do, <laughs> but I don't know if they would even let me do it. They'd probably, you know, say if I cut trees down that, that people would get coronavirus or something. And then there's Little some joke. kind of, uh, Development fee, I forget what it's yeah. called, but it's and a specialized... Permits from the town, permits from this and that, and whatever else. It, you're going through a swampy area that's, you know, uh, wetlands or something. So best case scenario, it would be tw probably twenty to $30,000 just to get electricity to the property here. Um, again, that's one of the reasons we bought the property, because there, there's no electricity out there, which means the price of the land goes way down. I mean... We didn't spend that much for the property. Um, it was just under, just around 300 to $350 per acre. Okay, so again, show me another ministry that's operating with this kind of cheap operating cost. 
Um, and then we would, after we put electricity in, we'd have to, of course, get you know phone lines put in, and then uh, build a place. So that's why the the GoFundMe thing of forty thousand dollars is our goal. That would buy us a place in the area, um, a cheaper place in the area. It's not going to buy us anything real nice, but that's okay. Um, again, I can fix up the right place. I'm not going to have a well in the basement with a sump pump. I'm not doing that again. Or a right of way. Okay. If you're a young person out there, don't be tempted by cheap land that has legal easement or it's called a legal easement or a right of way going back to it. Don't ever do that. Okay. And don't buy a place that has a, a well in the basement that overflows and has a sump pump to get it out. Oh, but it's cheap. There's a reason it's cheap. All right. I've, I've had to learn that. But again, you know, why are we buying this stuff? Because, not because we're just totally stupid. I mean, there, we were ignorant of some things, but again, we're going for low cost things so that we're not a burden on the body of Christ. Uh, we live very, very, very much below what most people would even consider poverty, poverty type of things because I'm dedicating myself more to speaking to people and doing things for free for people. Uh, had things, you know, would things have worked out differently if I would have kept on making products for sale? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I have no idea. Uh, another thing that I have written down here, I have some notes written down. Um, we don't want Oliver, our son, if you don't know about that, um, we don't want our son to be raised with uh, online internet access you know, on grid, online, the whole thing. We, we're keeping him away from computers. Um, and so if we had an on grid home where, you know, computers are real accessible and whatever else, um, it's just not the kind of an upbringing that we want for our son. It'd be, it'd be more expensive. And um, this is much cheaper here. And he loves it. He loves, you know, you'll see him in the videos. He's out running around in the woods and riding his bike around the woods and, and everything else. It's the, the life that we want for our son. So, um, but now on to the thing of the properties in the area. Um, again, what can you pray for? Um, there's a thing called tax acquired properties. Okay. Here in this area, I don't know what it's like state by state, but in, in the state of Maine, if somebody doesn't pay their property tax for three years, first year they get a lien placed on their property. And then after three years where they don't pay anything, the property, the, the town will, will basically confiscate the property, kick the people off of it. Um, and back a few years ago, when we started talking about the thing of needing to relocate from Bridgewater down closer to home here, um, there was actually uh, three different tax acquired properties that were available and we were you know excited and we thought they were all you know in in and around the the town of Patton and um, so the one was a trailer just a little single wide trailer in the town of Patton and uh, we I thought hey that one you know we might you, you put a closed bid in on it uh, too and then they would decide you know okay well you have the highest bid you get the property and so I thought, hey, this, this might be good, this, this little trailer, single wide trailer or something, an old one in the town of Patton. doesn't have any land, the property tax would be cheap, the whole thing. And we went and they had bulldozed it already. I'm thinking, okay, you know, before the bidding even started, you bulldozed the thing. I, I don't know if some neighbor bought it and, and just said, I want that as a lot or whatever else. And they, okay, you know, and then they took it off the market or I don't know. Then there was another place. It was an old, really old house. Would have been beautiful in its day, but people trashed it. And um, big, huge Victorian mansion, you know, built in late 1800s. And it was really, really in bad shape. I mean, horrible shape. The basement walls were caving in. I mean, the place, it's, it's still being torn down, actually. It's still in the process of being torn down. And I think the starting bid was right around $6,500, 6500 Okay, and then there was another place, another uh, trailer on some land outside of town, outside of the town of Patton. And I don't remember if it was six thousand or sixty-five hundred that we bid on that place. Um, I think it was sixty-five hundred. 
if I remember correctly. And you know, that's what we could afford at the time, 6,500. Again, we're not looking to spend a huge amount of money here. And we were outbid by $275. You know, obviously the Lord didn't want us to have it, but you know, it wasn't his will for us to have that place at that time. Um, but I still just kind of scratch my head on that when I just think $275 more and we could have had it, <laughs> you know? So, uh, again, properties go for very cheap in this area if they're tax acquired. Um, and there's a lot of abandoned houses in the area, abandoned cabins, um, that would work out just great, but none of them are for sale right now. Uh, there are some places in town that are 70 plus thousand dollars that's out of our range. We can't afford that. And I'm not going to get a mortgage or whatever, especially with the economy going the way it's going. Uh, no way. No way. I'm not getting any kind of mortgage. I'm not going to get in de into debt. Um, so uh, $40,000 would buy us a place that is, you know, that's what the GoFundMe page is. $40,000 would get us up into the range of a place that's older, that needs work and whatever. But if we can find something that's tax acquired, it's going to really be that much better. And we've already spent um, money having to buy things here on this property so we could set up our library again. This thing here, um, we've set up this. Uh, it's an old tractor trailer, reefer, a reefer trailer, refrigerated trailer. These walls are, you know, um, two inch thick. They got foam in them and stuff like that. And um, it works, you know, not real glamorous or anything, but, but uh, we still need to have a place in the area that can have internet. And like I said, to get it here to the property would be ridiculous because we'd end up spending far more than what we would spend on just a secondary property. And then um, we would have, if we have a property, depending on what we would get, um, we have different plans for the future. One of those plans is that uh, we would be able to meet with people and things. Um, my wife has had a chance to actually talk to women in the area and whatever else. And, and there's, you know, we're looking more for that in the future where she'll be able to advise people on how to get off pharmaceutical drugs. Uh, my wife is just studying so much. We've spent so much money on obtaining, I mean, she actually, Lord actually opened up an opportunity for her to buy, um, physician's desk references, a whole number of years of those things from a pharmacy that was closing down. Um, and she's bought books from the pharmaceutical industry, from you know herbal healing type of stuff. And just, we've built up quite a library of materials and she's studying those things um, and would like to be able to help people to get off of the pharmaceutical drugs. She went into the thing trying to prove that pharmaceutical drugs, what are the ingredients, um, the toxic ingredients that go into these pills. And that's great to show people that these things are bad. But then what follows? People say, okay, you proved to me that my drug that I'm taking is bad for me, but what do I do to replace it? See? And you say, well, herbal herbal cures, herbal pills. Eh, eh, because a lot of these herbal, you know, things that you'll get from the store, or whatever, echinacea or something like that in, in capsule form, there's you know, problems with that, okay? There's the gelatin and whatever else that makes the gel capsule, there's issues. A lot of the natural health uh, supplements and whatnot, that will have magnesium stearate in it, which is chemicals. Um, they'll have a lot of things there, and, and they're designed to be on the shelves for years. That's not good, that's not true herbal healing. And so, and, and you can't see, the mindset, gotta go on a little rant here, the mindset is, I can live how I want to live, and when I get sick, a pharmaceutical pill will help me. You say, the pharmaceutical pills are bad. They say, oh, okay, then I'll take an herbal cure, and I can live how I want to live. No, it's proper nutrition. Then you don't get sick in the first place. And if you do get sick, it goes away very quickly because your immune system is very strong. But how do you jump from pharmaceutical pill addiction over to nutritional health? See, that's what my wife is working on right now, how to get nutrition that can actually diminish the effects of the pharmaceutical pills so you don't have the nasty side effects by getting off of them and get you over here to true nutritional health. Well, she wants to be able to meet with somebody. 
going to be a little bit hard with our current situation. <laughs> going an hour and a half to try to meet somebody, and you get there, and they called, and they said, oh, I can't make it today. And you go, ugh, you know. <laughs> I mean, we've had shipment type of stuff that we have shipped up to here. And we get there, and literally we've had this happen a number of times. We get there, and they say, it didn't work out today. Sorry, can we come back tomorrow? <sighs> and you just think, oh, great, you know. <laughs> Got another three-hour trip ahead of us tomorrow. Okay, you know. So, again, we want to be able to actually physically meet with people. Um, the local people or people that are very serious. You know, I don't want to waste our time with people that are just going to play little head games and whatever else. If you're really seriously wanting to get your health back and, and can come to the area, again, we'd like to have some place where we can meet with people. Um, you know, it's a big part of that thing in the future there. Um, just looking here if I have any other things I need to say. Um, you know, here at this property, um, because of the donations of God's people, we are able to produce videos. Um, we have uh, right now our lighting. I've shared this in the one ministry thing. Uh, little LED lanterns like this that we can recharge with solar power. Um, we don't have a huge solar system. We don't have to run flush toilets or anything. We don't have them here. We have composting toilets. Uh, again, we're living very, very, very cheaply. So you give money to King James Video Ministries, it's not going to go to my new Lexus and my vacation home, you know, or my private jet like Kenneth Copeland flies around in or something. You know, we don't spend much money. Okay, we are, are very, very conscious, conscious about, uh, you know, the Lord's money that comes in. Uh, we're, we're, we don't just spend money frivolously. So, I, you know, people would say, oh, that's a lot that you're asking for. Well, compared to other ministries, no, it's not. Okay, and like I said, I'll just reiterate this again here before I show some more things, um, future plans and whatnot. Um, another thing. You know, please pray that the Lord would open up a place in this area here, the area around Patton, um, that we could be able to, you know, find an old place. Um, we did find a place. There was a, a place down in the town of Patton that we looked at and uh, set up an appointment with a real estate agent and everything. And um, it was a, it was owned by a guy named Anderson, and it was on Church Street. So we thought that was kind of funny, you know, the Anderson House on Church Street. We made a video about that years ago. If you've been around for a while, you probably remember that. And we went and we found out that uh, it was pretty rough condition. The whole one back part of the house was actually ripping away and sinking into the ground. There was a, you walked into the bathroom and there you look up and there's a hole through the ceiling. And there's snow and and roof pieces on top of the kitchen or top of the bathroom sink it's kind of a oh okay that's nice and then the, the to top it all off we found that it was formerly a meth house where they were producing methamphetamines and uh, i brought that out to some of the brethren and they were saying don't buy that place that stuff that residue gets into the walls and it's not good so um but that was the last place i guess that we looked at i think wasn't it I don't think we looked at any place since then, but uh, it was, what was it, 15000 I think, that they were asking for it. I think it was $15,000. So again, we're not looking, I mean, there's there's beautiful houses down in town for $70,000, $75,000. I mean, you can look it up, you can do your own research and, and look it up, Patton, Maine, P-A-T-T-E-N, Maine, and, uh, you know, look at the places that are for sale, look at the places in the area and whatever else. Um, we're not looking to get some kind of a huge, big, multi-million dollar building and whatever else. Um, if you believe in what we do, um, donate to the ministry. If, if you say, I can't, then please donate your time and pray. Uh, we really, really need that. Um, I'll show a little bit of this here in just a couple minutes. I'll have to move the camera. I'm not going to go walk back, but back this little hallway, so to speak, right here. Um, again, we, you know, this, all the tongue and groove pine here and everything else, we built this, uh, you know, basically a tiny home inside this old reefer trailer. And um, 
you know, I built it all myself, well, wife and my son helping. And, um, you know, so I can build things again, saving money. So we're not a burden on the body of Christ, but, uh, a big plan for the future, a big thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing, I'm going to be going back to offline videos like this kind of thing. Okay. Not going to be doing DVDs anymore because of the limitations of DVDs. There's, you can only put so much on a DVD and you, you do the double sided DVD or the, you know, the Blu-ray and all this other stuff. M many people don't even have DVD players anymore. So, um, I will be coming out with more videos on that are offline videos. And I'm going to show here in a little bit. I'll, we'll go back the hallway there. I'm already building a studio back there to make these offline videos. And they're going to be, you know, really detailed studies in the Bible. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, not a lot of the just YouTube preaching and whatever, but getting into the scriptures and really going through a uh, study on dispensational teaching, on the, the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble, going through all the scriptures and all the arguments and really, really high detailed. And I can bring out the information the way I want to bring it out without YouTube censorship. I can use my royalty-free music that I paid money for that YouTube says I can't use. Just weird. Um, and another thing I brought out, um, oh, probably... Uh, 2018, I think, is, is when I brought this out. This external hard drive project, a little cord there, but uh, these things here, little external hard drive, I think it's a three terabyte or something like that, um, but too controversial for YouTube. Just made those little stickers there. Um, and this had all my years of YouTube from 2008 up until 2018. So 10 years on YouTube here on these little things. Um, there's something right around, what, 1,500 videos or something, I think, right around there. And there were videos that had been deleted by YouTube. They're on there. Um, a few videos that were never, never made it to YouTube are on here as well. Um, our Pharmacopoeia Inquisition series that never made it to YouTube. Um, that's on here, a bunch of different things. And I had these for sale for a while, but two things happened. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Western Digital, the ones that make these little external hard drives, um, passports, I think they're called, they redesigned this. So now they're red and black, I think, if I remember correctly. Unless they redesigned it again, they might have. Um, but they redesigned this thing. So uh, when I ran out of when I sold all of these that I had in stock, um, you know, I didn't buy any of the new ones yet because of reason number two. And that is, I really thought that they were going to be shutting my channel down. I've been thinking that for a while. <laughs> it's the Lord's doing that it's still going, I guess. So there's still people that need to be warned and, and whatever else and, and, and taught the word of God. Um, great praise the Lord. But I just kind of thought, well, 2018 is going to be it. So I can end 10 official years on YouTube. Boom, we're done. And now in 2019, I'll just make some videos. And, and then when they shut me down permanently, when they close down my channel, then I can re-release this with all the 2019 videos on it. And I thought that at the time. Now it's going to be 2019 going into 2020. So I will be re-releasing this. But I'm pretty much going to wait till YouTube says to my channel, which will eventually happen, I believe, um, because it just doesn't make sense for me to re-release this every year or two or whatever else and with just, you know, whatever. And for the people that bought this original one of the original first 10 years, I will uh, offer whenever YouTube shuts us down, I'll offer if you send me yours, I'll put the rest of the videos on for free and send it back to you. Um, or we'll work out some other kind of a deal that, you know, I'll make sure that you get the missing videos. Um, so I'll be sure of that. But this is basically going to be the future for King James Video Ministries, I believe. Some form, not this big, because I don't need this much space for doing just big studies, detailed studies. Um, but, you know, this is what the future is going to be. 
for King James Video Ministries, um, offline type of videos in the future, because then they can't be controlled, they can't be messed with. Um, I'm real sick and tired of all the nutty stuff that goes on on YouTube. All the, the people that, um, again, if you don't know uh, different people, I've seen new people come along, they say, why don't you try Patreon? You know, and I think, boy, you're new, aren't you? <laughs> you know, um, we were on Patreon, was it 2016, I think, when we started that? No. Or was it 2017? Well, I think it was 2017 because it was when we were first moving here because we were talking about our three ministry needs and stuff. So yeah, my wife's really sitting over here. Yeah, well, I, I think it was, was. I think it was late 2017 into 2018. Into 2018 is when we had Patreon, and all these goons, uh, Edward PF123, being the satanic pale demon that he is, and he he would come out and he was just making so many videos, you know trying to take my channel down and whatever and he said at one point you know if, if you don't if you don't like my my you know videos against you exposing you then just go put your stuff private you know make it make your videos private you know well I'm or fud um we did we went to patreon and right away i mean it was just almost instantly these infiltrators are coming in and they're stealing my private videos that are for patreons uh, and they're putting them on YouTube and I contacted YouTube and YouTube said we don't see it as a violation of your copyright You know, of course, they're gonna side with any demon that comes against me and um, And so long story short one of these guys um, Was a criminal had a history, you know criminal history and I made a private unlisted video for my patrons just to show what this guy is and whatever else and they said I doxed him as a result of that and they deleted my patreon account so that was a, one of the biggest headaches I ever experienced the whole patreon thing so I will never be going back to patreon for any reason ever ever again so don't suggest patreon um, but anyways that's that pretty much covers I think the whole situation that we're in right now, um, you know, with the way that this world is going right now with all this lockdown, stay at home stuff and whatever else. I mean, I've met police officers in this area. They're incredibly nice. Town officials, I get along with them just fine. People are very laid back up here in northern Maine. So there was no, there was actually, I think down in one of the southern counties of Maine, there was actually a, a police sheriff and he said, uh, the, the governor Janet Mills of Maine right now she was saying that people have to stay at home and whatever else and and you know they should be stopped and told to go home and and this sheriff came out and he said I'm not going to put my officers the life of my officers at risk and he said we're not living in Nazi Germany I'm not going to have them out stopping people saying where are your papers can I see your papers please so if you're in a state like California or New York or someplace like that leave okay Leave as soon as you can because it's only going to get worse in the future. Okay, the next pandemic thing it comes out, like the Black Pope said, it's going to be much worse. They're going to take more rights away and everything else. So if you can leave, leave. Okay, so I wasn't really worried about the thing of driving from here up to Bridgewater with all this pandemic stuff. You know, um, we were able to, to, to do the driving without any harassment from the police or anything else. And I mean, we're not even hurting anybody because we're going from our private residence to a private residence. So what can they really say? We're not going to be, you know, endangering anyone, you know, so um, not really a, a big concern. But of course, some bigger, you know, pandemic thing comes out this coming fall or whenever they release something else, they could say total lockdown and we're an hour and a half away from where I work at that point in time. So again, there is urgency here. There is, there is just, you know, uh, hey, we need to do something, okay? And um, I don't know if I said this earlier, the thing about what are we going to do with Bridgewater? I don't think I did. Um, let me cover this as well. What are we going to do with the, the Bridgewater place when we get something down here? Are we going to sell that and make money or something like that? Well, quite frankly, we're not going to get anything for the house in the condition it's in right now. It's actually worth more to us to tear the place down and use the materials to build what we need on this property. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to deconstruct 
the Bridgewater House. Um, it's an older place. It was built in 1930, so there's actually some old growth type, you know, uh, lumber in it and stuff that I've I've seen in working on the place and whatever else. Um, there's some real good, in, you know, construction material. There's windows. There's some doors, you know, and and uh, a lot of good materials that we want to use here at our property. So that's what our plan is. When we get a new place here, move everything out of Bridgewater, get all settled down down in here and then in our spare time go up there and tear down the old place um, I built a shed there as well and I'd like to tear that down so there's a lot of things we'd like to get out of there tear the place down and then I'm probably going to sell the property to a neighbor or whatever else one of our neighbors helped us quite a bit next door neighbor older guy and um, was actually you know raised right beside our house so that's the plan just to just to inform people of that uh, again we're not going to waste anything we're not going to just say oh you know you buy us a house and then we're just going to you know sit on that property and not do anything with it we're going to use everything um, you're not going to waste your money giving to king james video ministries all right but i'm going to show you now back there in the uh, future studio where i'm going to be recording offline videos, um, detailed Bible study type of things. Because again, I got to just say this. Um, we've had different families and they contact us and they say, we'd really love to support your ministry, but we can't do it while you're on YouTube. Well, I understand why. Okay, you get done watching this video and it's going to come up with a bunch of junk. You know, you might also be interested in this and, and you know, suggestions from YouTube after mine is done. And, you know, I get it. A, a homeschooling family, might want to watch, you know, have their boys watch one of my videos teaching doctrines of the Bible, but then they get vexed by the filthy stuff that pops up on the screen. I get that. I understand that. Offline videos, go back to this type of a thing. Um, it's you, you buy the video from kingjamesvideoministries.com in the future, ship it to you. You can put it on your computer. You can put it on a a flat screen TV, a lot of those have the little USB port on the back from what I've heard now. However, we're going to do it. And um, then you'll be able to, you know, have preaching and teaching from the Word of God without the drama of YouTube and all the other filth of YouTube. So that's the plan for the future. We are also considering writing books. Again, we're in touch with some brethren on that. Um, but we need to cut out this one and a half hours each way thing. Uh, that's what is really the, the problem right now. So I'm going to show you back in the future studio here in a minute. But please, again, if you don't want to donate to the, the new ministry office thing or you can't, that's fine. But please pray fervently that the Lord provides something down in the Patton main area. Okay. Let me show you what's back here. All right. We're back here in the future recording studio. I'm unplugged from my audio recorder, so sorry the audio is not quite as good. But behind me here I have a whiteboard, a big one, that I can use. And I also have my uh, banner here that I had made for the videos that are coming up. They'll be called Biblical Truth and Doctrine on Dispensationalism. Biblical Truth and Doctrine on, you know, the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Whatever, whatever subjects I want to talk about. And, of course, there's a little bit of an inside joke there. <clears throat> Biblical Truth and Doctrine, BTD, my initials, Brian Troy Denlinger. And so, but this is where I'm going to be doing it. I'm going to have, you know, a table here and whatever else. We'll be doing a lot of very detailed studies, um, a lot of really interesting things. Again, information that we've been sitting on um, for a long time, studies that we've been wanting to do. But it's just YouTube's not the place for it. Uh, because we have to put out a lot of detail and I just it's not worth our time putting a lot of this stuff out on YouTube but um, this is going to be there's going to be a lot of good stuff coming out from this and you know right now uh, we're living in this trailer um, trying to again save money we do things without debt and um, just to just let this be known um, our big dream was to build on this land we were going to build a house little cabin on this land and uh, we were really looking forward to doing that 
But after praying about it, we just said, you know what? The ministry has to come first. We have to spend our money this year and get a put every put all of our energy, everything we can into getting a new office. And so that's what we're going to do. And uh, so that's why we need your prayers. We need fervent prayers on this thing from the body of Christ. Uh, if you're a friend of the ministry, please pray for us that we need a place to open up. And I mean, something could open up very cheap. We could be in very quickly. I realize that the economy going the way it's going, the housing bubble is going to burst, so there's going to be a lot of cheap houses around, but what condition is the money going to be in at that point in time with hyperinflation coming? So we don't really want to play the market and whatever. We just, we're, we're asking for prayers from the body of Christ that we would be able to get a new office in the area so that we can say, okay, that's done. Build the place that we need to build here on our property, which we've been my wife and I, it'll be eight years this month that we've been married, and we've never had an uh, actual home of our own the entire time. And it's because I've sacrificed. Quite frankly, I've sacrificed for the body of Christ. Um, I remember, remember my father-in-law, the one time when I went out there to get my wife out in Iowa, and he said to me, he said, so, you know, explain to me what you do. And I said, well, I, you know, make sermon and preaching videos, and, he, and I said, uh, I answer a lot of emails and he said now how do you get paid for answering the emails how do you get reimbursed for that time because obviously you have to charge something and I said no I don't charge anything and he huh and you know that seems strange to people when they think about you know a preacher and organized religion they think to themselves well you have to get paid for counseling people and whatever else I never have um, I've sacrificed a lot and you don't see it on camera you don't see the people that I've helped in person the people that I've helped on the phone, through Skype, through whatever, uh, writing back and forth. You don't see that. Um, but we've sacrificed. We're still sacrificing. But we're, we're asking for the prayers, number one, of God's people. Number two, if you want to donate to the GoFundMe thing or just through the ministry or whatever, to help us get an office closer by so we can be much more efficient. Um, once that's done... We'll be able to actually build on our property a very simple, low-cost, off-grid place. And then this, can we're no longer going to be living in this thing, and we're going to use this completely for the ministry. I'll be able to bring out offline videos, teaching and preaching of, of God's Word, and we'll take the ministry to a whole new level. Um, no more YouTube censorship messing around with our videos and whatever else. No more goony people stealing my stuff and whatever else. That's our desire. Um, we're going to put aside our needs for having a house. We've been doing it for eight years, you know, seven years, almost eight years this month. Um, so we'll, we'll put it aside that much longer. And uh, for the ministry, that's what we're doing. So that's going to be it for the video. Uh, really, 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 we need your prayers that the Lord would open up something in the area here. Um, some house would come up that we'd be able to buy it to move the ministry to it full time there and um, that we'd be able to meet with people in person and um, so please pray for us if you want to donate, donate, that'd be great that is going to be it and we thank you in advance for your prayers thank you for your friendship thank you to those out there who have donated over the years kept us going and uh, we'll see you in future videos thank you for watching